here it is. <clears throat> so, first off, I'm going to read this. In t um, first off, let's start with things that totally happened. Oh, God. Oh, God. I just, oh, God. I haven't read it. It's great. It's really good. Oh, I think God. Like, I think you'll like oh, it. I think you'll like it. God. Give it a break. Come on. You, you can do, we can get through this. Let no. Me, no, we can get through this. Let me, let me put it over here so we can see it better. Um, <clears throat> so this is from an article that she did for Ellie, L, L, whatever this chick magazine is. Uh, Senator Kamala Harris. Oh, this is so crazy. I already read ahead. Uh, I know what part you read already. Oh, my f face hurts. I know what you read already. Uh, Senator Kamala Harris started her life's work young. She laughs from her gut the way you would with family as she remembers being wheeled through an Oakland, California civil rights march in a stroller with no straps with her parents and her uncle. At some point, she fell out from the stroller. Few safety regulations existed for children's equipment back then. Thanks, Ralph Nader. Ralph Nader editing this article. And the adults caught up in the rapture of protest just kept on marching. By the time... She, by the time they noticed little Cam Kamala was, go was gone and doubled back, she was understandably upset. My mother tells a story about how I'm fussing. She talks like that now. Harris says, and she's like, baby, what you mean? What do you need? And I just looked up at her and said, freedom. <laughs> I just looked up at her and said, freedom, freedom. I, I, I can't say any of the things that I want to say right now. Well, before you do, and before you do, let me, there's a little more of this story. I, well, this. I, before any, I can't. I'm, my brain is cycling through, and all of the things that are going through my head, I'm like, I couldn't even utter these words. You could words. say it in your car while you're driving, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's that, it's that level of... Or, yeah. Oh, my God. I, I am... I, I, oh, ho, oh, 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 ho, oh. And you know what the worst part is? This goes back to what I said yesterday. Mm -hmm. I'm all for the New World Order now, which, by the way, I'm still waiting on that application, boys. Hit me up anytime. I mean, you guys can just, like... You have my phone number, right? Like you just call me from like an unlisted number, told me to meet you somewhere. I'm still waiting on my NWO invite. Uh, I understand now. I understand that people, because because a bunch of women are going to read this and they're going to go, "Isn't that the greatest?" Oh my well, god! And I have one more thing to add to this, if you don't mind. It's worse. Yeah, it's worse. Turns out she stole it from a 1965 Playboy interview with Martin Luther King Jr., where he wrote. <clears throat> I will never forget a moment in Birmingham when a policeman accosted a little Negro girl, seven, eight years old, who was walking in demonstration with her mother. What do you want? The policeman asked her gruffly and little uh, the gruffly and, and the, asked her gruffly and the little girl looked him straight in the eyes and answered, feed him. She couldn't even pronounce it. But she knew it. It was beautiful. Hi, I'd like to feel this if I could. Uh, I actually was that little girl. Oh, no. Um, so I could understand the confusion, but uh, I was actually the little girl that inspired Dr. King. Oh, really? Yes. So that was, but but wait a second. No, I wouldn't. She, she said Oakland and he said Birmingham. I wouldn't put it past Kamala Harris mm -hmm. to look dead in the eyes of whoever was interviewing her and tell that bald faced lie. No, I was the little girl, actually. Dr. King was very inspired by my early work. So she stole it from... And by the way, nobody's going to care. Do you, we, we're, we, we do realize, right, at least that like these people can do whatever they want. And if they fuck up or if they get caught, it's fine. They just do it again. Like, there's no... There's no there should be consequences for these sorts of things. I think we all agree, right, that there should just be... like. Not even in politics, just in real life. When you tell a story like that, and then somebody goes, yeah, you sure didn't lift that from Dr. Martin Luther King from 1965? Like, even in your group of friends, you should be ridiculed out of the room. Oh, like, I, I already have the I have a consequence for her. I already have one. She has to be 100% instead of just 50%. Okay, I like that. Consequences. Freedom. 
What, do you uh, think who her, was your favorite Fleetham player? Do you fighter? think her Indian side is very racist against her black side? It has to be. They don't really don't. I don't. don't like I will each not other. rent to these people. They are destroy your property. But who was your favorite Fleetham fighter? Um, There's so many of them. Who was that one guy from the Mujahideen? Um, mine's Robert E. Lee. Who's yours? Mine's uh, Al Baghdadi. Oh, nice. Good pick. <laughs> mine's, mine's Al Zakari. <laughs> Sorry, I mean you know whoever whoever the whoever the Al Qaeda in uh, Iraq guy was. Mine's was, Al, mine's Al Borland from Home Improvement. <laughs> yeah, um, <coughs> that is yeah I'm fine. But how is there no like? How do you not shame people like this? I don't understand oh, it. Well, I mean yeah on the show, but oh everybody else, we're not exactly going to derail the presidency. We're not going to stop the steel, Royce. Yes, we are. How are we going to do that? 